All right, join us now on Inside TBT. Getting ready for another season with Red Scare, Trey Landers. Trey, welcome to the show. Appreciate it, man. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Always, man. A fan favorite, Trey Landers. Dayton shows out like no other fan base does in the TBT year after year. Maybe that could be why they have the championship games the past few seasons. Um, I guess we can start there. You're done playing in college. Like, you you don't play for the Dayton Flyers anymore. Why do they love you guys so much? I don't know, man. I mean, obviously, we brought some some great memories um, to my past four years, especially my last year, you know, which was amazing. So, I mean, our, our, our fans, they always travel everywhere we go, even when I was in school, you know. So, I remember when I first – I was my, was it my junior year, I went to the TBT at Capitol. And, like, I walked in, and like, I'm just – you know, I'm just coming to watch the game. Get a crazy standing ovation. And like ever since then, I'm like, Joy, like I gotta play in this like every year I can, bro. It's like, and it's like, that's just who they are. They call Flyer Faithful, the loud, everything is, excuse me. And they just they travel and they just they just love, love being around us. We love being around them. You know, they bring us so much excitement and so much energy when we play is great. Yeah, I think everyone is is fired up to get to watch you again because during the year, you don't have the luxury of playing, you know, at home in Dayton. Can you give can you give the listeners, your fans, an update on what the last year has looked like for you? Okay, so um, I, I traveled to Finland in August, played there. Um, situation it, it wasn't bad. We had like management problems, and you feel me. So they sent the Americans home. So I come home, see my family. Um, I think it's a Sunday night, Monday morning. I get a phone call at seven in the morning, and I'm like, you know, I'm eyes, <laughs> hello. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is the Cleveland Charge calling me. So I'm like, okay. So I'll instantly pop up. I'm like, okay. So I remember after I played in TBT my first year, they had called me on an interview on a Zoom call. Um, so I kind of was familiar with a couple of guys like Brandon Yu, Leron Fainan, Dan, a couple of guys. But uh, that was a year ago or two years ago now, you know. But, um, yeah, so they kept calling me in for a workout. The workout went well, and I played within the rest of the season. Home, back home, back playing in Ohio. So what you have kind of that's a little bit – unique to a lot of the guys in CBT is your family did kind of get to see you play yep. for the majority of the year this year. Um, can you talk, I mean, it's, it's different because usually what we're asking guys is what does it mean to be able to play in front of your fans and your family over the summer? Because a lot of the guys obviously are playing overseas and everything. What did it mean to get to play for the professional team in Ohio? Like as an Ohio kid, like that's gotta be pretty cool. It meant, it meant a lot for me. Um, especially because like my first two years overseas, my family was never able to come over, you know, with the COVID stuff going on. And then <clears throat> so my nephew being here and stuff like that. So it was difficult. Um, so I really had my first year was really tough because I wasn't used to it. You know I mean? At home, they come and see me. I live up the street, you know, mom can bring me meals. I'm not having to cook anything, not grocery shopping, you know? So it was a big transition. Um, but I was very, very blessed and fortunate when I came home to get that phone call. And like ever since then, my mom was like, I'm coming every game. So she driving to Cleveland every, like literally almost every other game. Like mom, like, take some time and stay at the house a little bit, you know? <laughs> but uh, no, nah, just for them to be able to experience that and just, you know, have me having them meet Rondo or meet Jared Allen or Colin Sexton, all these guys who were, were great guys, I mean, great people to meet. Um, my little brother, you know, he's up and coming playing basketball too. This is my family, like, and everybody loves Taco, you know, so my nephew getting to meet them. It's just, just great experiences, you know, and, and me up, being able to do what I do, you know what I'm saying, and, and busting my, my tail to be where I'm at and have, my family experienced stuff that I'm experiencing as well, you know, so it's a blessing for me, but it's definitely a blessing for them as well, you know, so I'm just thankful for that. So we actually have met Taco as well. We did a, we and did a, Colin Sexton and Colin Sexton. Yeah. We did, a, God, we did a basketball like challenge with them all-star weekend, I guess three all-star games ago now, 2020, right before the pandemic. Right yeah. Pandemic. So we did a, but my, my question for you is, what did the All-Star game get to look like for you this year? Did you get to, you know, be involved in it? Did you get to hang out around all the guys? What was that like for you? Yeah, so it was really crazy. So I stayed downtown uh, at, at the May, <clears throat> and I'm I'm not ever – never experienced All-Star weekend ever, you know. So I'm walking home. I mean, we getting home from practice and stuff, and it's packed everywhere. Restaurants, to the casinos, to the mall, everything's packed. So I, mean, I kid you not, I'm walking into my apartment. Uh, it's me, Malik Newman, and Trey Scott. They, they went to UC. So we all, that was like my, you feel me? So we all got close together. So we walking in, and we see Damian Lillard, Jason Tatum, Taco. I'm like, what the heck? 
just like you know how you just like okay like I, I don't play against these guys in high school you know like what's for you to see it like firsthand it's like bro like i'm really like living this right now you know so it was great man i obviously i got to see obi me and obi linked up you know him being in the dunk contest and stuff so it was it was just great man like just seeing some familiar faces meeting new faces you know connecting with people um it, it was it was great man it was really great my mom came down she got to go to the to the all-star game i actually gave her my ticket that i had so she can go watch and i stayed at home but um yeah it was it's, it's been great it's been great man is obi the best dunker you've ever seen or is there a guy that we don't know about that you know everyone loves to hear about those underground guys that maybe he was your teammate at dayton maybe you played against him in aau but like obviously obi's insane he won the dunk contest but like is, yeah. is he the is he really the best dunker you've ever seen that's a great question and i, I might say him and one other guy that's, that's competing with him just because like I've seen guys that I like, can do the same things then, but they're shorter, so it looks better because they're smaller. But like the stuff Obi does, it's like, bro, it's like I've never seen it before, especially with a guy that's 6'9 like that. It's him and a guy, you ever heard of a guy named Joe Ballard, Jumping Joe? No. Whenever y'all get a chance, I want y'all to look him up. So yeah. he's from Dayton, went to third good. Like he's a professional dunker. Stuff he's done that I've seen firsthand is insane. But I got I got to, I. I gotta go with Obi. Got to. I, I right. remember what one one memory I never forget, bro. This is when he first came. He was a, a red shirt, so we was in practice. We was playing five on five or whatever. Rebound comes off. I grab it and he's out there. So I swing it to him. He catches, catches it. I bro, about the volleyball line. Takes one dribble, goes between his legs and dunks it with two hands. And I was like, said Coach Grant, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it like it called the, the, everybody in the gym was just like. What just happened? Like, and it was just so easy. He just didn't walk back on defense. We just like, bro, like, that's not normal. Like, off one dribble, like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous, bro. And I've seen some guys that can get off the ground. But, yeah, I might I might have to say Obi. <clears throat> For sure. It's a good it's a good uh, default answer when you get to go with Obi as, as the best dunker you know. But we got to get serious here for a section – or for, for a second – we got to hold you accountable about something. You ready? Yeah. Last year, the Elite Eight and on for TBT in Dayton. Red Scare, not in attendance. <laughs> year before that, oh. fell out a little earlier than they would have liked. So what is going to happen this year? How can you guys get your, your, your regionals in Dayton, but how are you going to stay playing in Dayton all the way through? Man, I just think, um, I think last year we just had like a lot of, ego situations um, that kind of hurt us. I mean, the first year we played amazing. Um, we obviously ended up losing the Golden Eagles who won the whole thing, you know, it was, it was cool, you know, we competed, but um, last year we just had some some situations going on. That's fine. You know, like obviously this is about figuring stuff out and building and obviously you see we have a different team, you know what I'm saying, coming back and have some different guys coming in and, uh, you know, so, I mean, it, 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 it'd be nice for us, but I will say one thing, we got we got some some dogs coming in this year, like regardless of anything they um, they play to win and that's what I, i've lived for i mean I don't, I don't care about coming out scoring 30 i don't care about none of that as long as we win in games and we competing i'm cool and who are some of those guys obviously we know some of the names you've announced some of the names who are some of those some of those dogs aforementioned dogs really the whole my whole roster right now is some dogs first off but we all we all bring something like different like like I'm a vocal guy, you know. I'm, I'm like the the hard nosed Draymond type of guy. You got Ryan Mike Sell, who's kind of the same, but like Ryan, he's he's so gritty at what he does. So you know, he's not the most athletic, you know, but he has to find ways to impact the game, and he does that. You got Joe Thomason, who's a city kid from where I'm from, you know, hard nosed. Uh, you got Scooch, which we I don't talk, talk about Scooch. You know what I'm saying? What he, what he brings to the table. Obviously, he doesn't say much, but his game speaks very, very loud. You know, Daryl Davis, who is the same. You know, he can get hot anytime. He can score the ball on all three levels, you know. So, we got guys that, like, bring a lot of things, man. I feel like it's gonna, we're going to mesh really, really well. You guys really got well. some You got some good names. You know, Trey Landers, that's a cool name. Ryan Mike Sell, that's like four names in one name. <laughs> that's like the best name ever. You guys got a good name team. Yeah, yeah. We just gotta forget the name. I'm, I'm running. I want to win. <laughs> I want to win. I was so I was so mad my first the first year. I was so mad because we was like right there, you know what I'm saying. And we played against some good teams like House of Pain were really good. Uh, Big X was good. Like 
we competed, you know, but like, bro, it's just like, when you get that close to it, you just it slip out your hand, you it make you want to, you know what I'm saying? Like want to get even more. Well, so that, was a, like, that was a see. Mickey Mouse championship anyway, because it was in the box. I don't care. I would have took it anyway. I don't care if it was Mickey Mouse, Goofy, Minnie. I need that money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. So, I so, do not care. So you talked about it, but, but really, what's the difference between this year's team? Like, why this year? I know you could say the dogs, like, yeah, everyone says that. Everyone thinks that they're, they got a bunch of guys on their team. But, like, you know, you guys have been close, and, you, and you've also not been close. But – You've always got the the players. You've always got the names. You got the support. Like you're gonna have a high seat again. But what's different about this year? I think well, really we don't know as of yet right now because we all haven't like been around each other. But I feel like because I've played with all these guys, so I know where they come from. I know their desire to, to win and, and their will to win. But I think our biggest thing is that we all like are comfortable playing our roles. Like we have guys that we know can go score. So okay, go score. We have guys who defend. Okay, you out there to defend vocal guys rebounding whatever you need to do to win whatever your role is i feel like that's the biggest thing we need to talk about like i said that's been like a lot of teams you see like professional teams that are really good you might have two superstars maybe everybody else is role guys and they look really well doing it you know what i'm saying so like if we are able to lock in with that and like that's what made us so good my senior year because you had obi top and Jalen crutcher first off them two in the pick and rows down there unstoppable when you got guys like eb watson Brian Mike Hill, Trey Lenners was shooting 35 to 40 percent between the three from three and 50 around the field as a, as a, as a whole. And Ibby's our six man, you know. So what Rodney Chapman defending and, and the way he shoots the ball, like it's just it's so hard because we got to think we're not out there scoring 30 a game, but like the stuff we do, it like sometimes it goes unnoticed, sometimes it doesn't. But it's like at the end of the day, like when you get a W, what does it matter? You feel me? So like if we all conduct into that and that be our centerpiece of us, we would be fine. I think I think I'm ready to say it. I've heard enough. Red scares going to the final four. I love to say it. Say it again. <laughs> yeah. Red scares. Red scares. <laughs> love the energy. But I mean, I'm 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 really excited, man. I haven't played in that gym in two years. Two years. And I didn't know it was gonna be my last. Well, I knew my last my senior night, but I'm like, bro, like the last game, you know. So I think it's gonna be like a, a heartfelt moment for me and Ryan, especially. Um, but it'll be worth it, man. It'll be worth it. There's two, there's two things I got to tell you that's going to make you want to win even more. So the okay. first thing is we're not going to be at the quarter five or we're not going to be in Dayton until the quarterfinals. So you got to okay. win so you can hang out with us. That's fine. <laughs> right. and, and the second thing is, and this is a secret, so you can't tell anyone, we're working on a, on an inside TBT t-shirt and mm-hmm. we're only going to pick, you know, our favorite guys to get one of those shirts. So if you want to get one of those shirts, you got to win and give us a little shout out in the post game interviews. Yeah. You know, I got y'all. We locked and loaded. I'm telling y'all, man, I can't wait. I'm so excited. I'm so excited, bro. Trey, my last question for you uh, before we let you go is a selfish question. Um, Mm -hmm. Last year you had two of my teammates uh, on your team. Are there any Buckeyes that are going to be on? Cause I don't know if Ohio state's going to have a team this year. Are there any Buckeyes that are going to be on the Dayton team? I just wait and see. I can't leak the business, man. <laughs> you almost got me, though. But uh, I don't know. We'll take it offline. Does that we'll mean Jared Sullinger is going to be on Red Scare? No. <laughs> I love Big Sully to death, but no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yo, Great we guy. Gotta... But we'll look, we look bad we put Sully on our team. Because he'd be like, okay, like, well, you got this uh, Ohio State alum, everything, all Ohio State. And you, mm, no, no. And he's ran the TBT for a couple years in a row too. That makes us look bad. That's like kind of like the the, the KD joining like Clay Draymond and Steph type thing. You know what I'm saying? It wouldn't look good. If you that know. would have to mean that Steph. Yeah. I'm Draymond. I don't know. I don't know if that Warriors team uh, lost in the round of 32. I think they won the championship and then lost in the championship. Oh, it don't. It don't look good. It don't look good. I'm not. No. No. But I mean, I don't know. We might like. CJ came up upon us last year, like, unexpected. We already had Trevor the year before that. But uh, so I actually used to hoop against CJ, like, when I was younger. You know, like, we got older and stuff, and we always kept in contact. And I asked what he was doing, if he was playing anything, because we needed a point guard. And he was like, nah. So he was all for it, which is, I don't know what's going to happen this year, what's going on with him. I know he just got home from Germany because uh, he was, like, kind of close to where I was at when I played my first year. So we kept in touch. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure. We'll see. I mean, you know, you know how it goes. Uh, all right, Trey, we'll end this the way we end 
every interview here. Um, and as Andrew likes to say, I think you'll be pretty good at this. Uh, we're going to, we're going to flip the tables on you. We're going to let you be the interviewer. We'll be the interviewees. Um, let you take control of the show for a little bit. Ask us any questions that's on your mind, anything you've been dying to, to ask us. Mm, that's a good, that's okay. So now I'm in control. I got a question. Okay, so like, with you guys putting like all this stuff together, like what do you guys look forward to like the most out of like everything as far as like from the players to the competing to the traveling? Like what do you guys look forward to the most? I love, as fun as it is to be at the games and stuff, it's just cool to, you know, we interview guys like you all the time it's cool to do them in person, you know, like, uh, you know, after uh, team 23 won and made it to the finals, you know, we're interviewing got like Marcus Hall and we're interviewing Andrew's favorite basketball player ever. Like we're, we're interviewing guys in person in the hotel, like hanging out, eating pizza, all, you know, bullshitting around like that's right. the best part. <laughs> hanging out with the coaches too, like just meeting all these new guys yeah. You know, we're, we're like, we're important guys, which is hilarious. Like we don't feel like it. So it's cool to like, you Branch know, out. yeah, exactly. And, and see, and, and yeah. after, cause we did the first year we did, it was all virtual and we talked to everybody. We never got to meet anybody. So like yeah, last we year, we got to meet I don't know if you guys. remember, we interviewed you virtually. Two years yeah. I was, in, I was sitting in the hotel. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Cause I had the, uh, the black and white TV t-shirt on. Yeah. And then we also got yeah. you like a few post games. With the, with the lady, right? What's her name? No, that was Jen, that was Jen Hale. Jen Hale, I, yeah. I know the post game press conferences, the bubble year. We were always in the end of those, but I don't know if you guys could see us. That's when I was in there with Ryan, Mike Sale, and Ryan McMahon, right? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think my favorite part is similar to what Joey said, is being in person. But like, I like that we have jokes with the guys the first few rounds, and then by the time we get to like the Elite Eight and on. They, they know the jokes. Like last year we asked Marcus Keene, I was like, hey, Marcus, you know, they were doing some trash talking before the game. And he was like, yeah, because of you guys. You guys were the <laughs> ones starting the trash talk. So like oh, it was wow. just funny, the, the jokes we have with the guys by the end of things. That's, man, that's crazy. So so what is like you think the most difficult part about it? Like I know you guys put a lot of time into this stuff, bro, and I know it's, it's hectic. You know, especially like after how you guys handled the bubble and it was like tremendous and nothing was like literally out of whack from from what the players seen. But I know that I know it was difficult. We we have a pretty easy job yeah. in the grand scheme of TBT, especially yeah. during the bubble year where we were just sitting at home and we just had to like open our computer at the end of games. But the hardest part by far is like there's eight regionals. OK, last year there was only four. So it was a little easier. But this year there's eight. We only are going to get to go to two. And now we're going to like be expected to have like good relationships with the guys who are coming from the regionals that we don't get to go to. So we're going to yeah. try to do more virtual stuff in the first rounds and stuff. So I'd say the hardest part is like, like if, if for example, we're going to go to Cincinnati probably this year, we're going to be chilling with, you know, the Xavier team. Ew. It's going to be tough not to like pick favorites of the Xavier team after we're with them for a week. Ew. Go ahead. I'm listening. <laughs> no, that's it. That's it. No, but Andrew's, Andrew's right. Like in the grand scheme of things, like me and like this, we don't, we work for the TBT, like, because we do this podcast, but we, we don't, we're, this is not our full-time job. Like we, we spend all, all day doing other stuff and we do this for fun basically. So, yeah. you know, for, for us, it's all fun and there's not much that's super tough, but what Andrew said is definitely the toughest. Like we can't be everywhere at once. We want to do an awesome job but we can't be everywhere at once talking to every team after every game, after every win and keeping up with all the storylines. So that that's the toughest part, but that in the grand scheme of things, that is, it's nothing. I got another question, bro. You collect shoes. That's shoes behind you. Yeah, bro. What size are you? That's what I do. I'm 13. What you do? Right, same. Yeah. I like that. We're going to have to talk then. Really talk. That's what I, that's yeah. my little side thing. I love shoes, bro. We could talk to you, man. I got, I got to get rid of some. So I think those were like the best questions we've ever been asked. Not even kidding. Really? Good questions. Oh, I appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, but um, yeah, like I said, man, I'm I'm excited, y'all. <clears throat> it's just like especially for me, like to be back home and like have my city come back out to watch me and my friends play again. You know, like that even like the our alumni, but like the people that's like seeing me like grow up from like grade school with Wayne to playing at UD, you know what I'm saying? They're watching me play when I wasn't playing my freshman year and still support, you know? So 
just like just to get to see them people and them familiar faces again like it's gonna be it's gonna be great <clears throat> we're excited too man we're excited for that team um don't hang up because let's talk about some Buckeyes and um, no no what? in a good way in a good way but <laughs> inside TBT we need the inside scoop we need the inside scoop um Cause I, cause I know some things too, but that's okay. Um, I right, will well, see what you know. Man. When, all right, well, we'll see you soon. We'll see you in Dayton for sure. Um, whether you're playing or not, that's TBD. If I'm not playing, I'm not going to be there. Really? I'm not showing up to that for one. Cause you just like basketball. It's in your city. Then you can come to our live show. show. Then you can come to our live show. I'll, well, I'll be on the live show. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> well, I, well, I, I have a hundred and ten percent plans on being at Dayton when y'all get there. All right, good. All right, good. All right, we'll see you in Dayton. All right, fellas. Thank y'all, man. Thank you. Clocking out early, that's the dish I don't like. Been getting paid since I was riding on the bike. Hit the pedal with the eighth, hopping on the ninth flight. I've been chilling out of sight. I'll be at the bar tonight. Told the bartender, go and take my car to swipe. You try to say. But your car get declined White rappers nowadays No, we're not too hard to find I'm so dapper with my ways I'm gon' linger in your mind Always told me good things Look, I'm too dull to our patient But I've been way too patient Riding bars in my basement I'm anxious in the real world It's time for me to say this The basics, the talent in my mind I can't waste it My life is too safe It's my time for it's taking I'm baking my mind Every day it's the same ish Lazy, my grind needs to get a new facelift from the underground and busting through the pavement Rock with it and lean with it My team winning, my team